Hello, Lo-Fi Guy here. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create responsive tabs using Vue. All you'll need to do is create two small components, and that is it. This picture right here is what the finished tab menu will look like. So, if you would like copy and pasteable code, I will have a blog version of this video in the description. I would like to note that I will not be covering detailed project setup in this video. I'm just starting from a basic view app that was just created using view create tabs. Also, I'm using Visual Studio Code. So before we jump into creating these components, we need some bootstrap. So go into the terminal and install npm install bootstrap. And we don't need bootstrap. We can do it without it, but it'll just make things a lot quicker because it's going to add some styles that are really nice. Once bootstrap has installed, Go ahead over to the blog tutorial or just look and pause the video here either way you want to get this copy it and go to the file called main.js and paste it in right here at the top so save that and cool you now have bootstrap so next let's get right into building these components so go over here to the components folder. I don't want this hello world default component, so I'm just going to delete it. And now do new file and call it tab nav dot view. So with all view components, you start off with a template, a script and a style. I won't be putting anything in the style because I'm going to be using bootstrap styles, but feel free to put whatever you want. So this component is going to have two tabs. I'm going to go to the blog tutorial because it will help you with understanding what these tabs do. Our tab nav component is going to have two props. First one is called tabs. All it is is an array of strings that define the names of the tabs. Second one is called selected. It's just a string that is equal to one of the tabs defined in this array. It is the currently selected tab. And if you want to know what this looks like when we use the tab nav, it looks like this. Here's the tabs prop, here's a selected prop, and there are the values being passed in. Okay, so let's build these props. The first one is called tabs. It's going to have a type of array and we're going to make it required. That's all that's saying is you have to have a tabs prop. The next one is called selected and it has a type of string because it is one of the tab names stored in the tabs prop. We'll also make that required like so. And then we're also going to have one method. So to find methods here, we're gonna call it set tab. It's going to take a tab as a parameter. And then all it's going to do is emit an event called selected with a value of whatever tab was passed into it. So it's obvious that an event is being emitted here, but it may not be obvious where that event is going. We will catch that later when we use tab nav inside of app.view. For now, don't worry about it. So now let's start working on the template here. First, we're gonna have a root div. On this root div, put a inline style of a width of 30%. All this is doing 
is making it so our tab navigator will not be too large. It won't take up the whole screen. It'll just take up a little bit of the screen. And then inside of this div, let's put an unordered list and let's give it a style of nav and nav tabs. These are just bootstrap styles. They make it so our tab navigator looks good without having to write our own styles. And then next, put a slot right there. So if you're not familiar with view, slots may be a little bit confusing. This just means that whenever we use our tab nav component, anything that we nest inside of it will render right here. So I'm gonna go back to the blog tutorial real quick. So for example, right here, say we're using the tab navigator like this, we have hello world nested inside of it and that hello world would appear right here inside the div and right after the unordered list. Hopefully that makes sense. Inside of the unordered list, put a list item and on that list item put a v4 that loops through all of our tabs. So all this is doing is if we have three tabs then it loops through each tab and there will be three list items and same for whatever is inside. So because we're using v4 anytime you use it you also have to put a key and you have to give it a value that is unique. So tab. Our tab is indeed unique. So that is that. And then let's add a style of nav item. That's just a bootstrap style. Makes things look nice. And then let's put a anchor tag. We'll also give it a bootstrap style of nav link. And we'll give it a dynamic style. And by dynamic, I mean the style changes based on some value. And so to do that, you just use this colon here. And then we'll put equals, put some brackets. And then inside the brackets, say active colon tab equals our selected prop. So what that's saying is to use the active style when this current tab is selected. Otherwise, this tab will not be active. The last thing we need to do is make it so that our name of our tab is actually displayed. And you just do it just like that. That displays the name of the tab. Okay, so now let's move on to the tab component. So create a file inside of the components folder and call it tab.view. Do the same thing as the other component, give it a template, give it a script, and give it a style, although we will not be using that, or I will not be. And this component is going to have one prop. This prop is going to be called isSelected going to have a type of boolean so pretty much all it is is a prop that's passed in and it's saying is this tab selected if so it's true if not it's false and we're actually going to be using that up here in our template so give it a root div and on it say v if is selected and if this is selected, then all this will show. Otherwise, none of it will show. And we actually only need to add one more line of code. So add a slot here. And you should know what this does from earlier, but I will explain again. So anytime we use our tab component, whatever is nested inside of it will be rendered right here. Okay, cool. So now let's go over to app.view and set everything up so that we can see it. 
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this hello world component, just like so. And then get rid of text align center. And I'm gonna add a little bit of styling so that it will center our tab navigator in the middle of the screen. It's pretty easy, just do display flex flex direction of row and then justify content of center and next let's import our components so import tab nav from components slash tab nav dot view and to make things quicker just gonna copy and paste this here and let's import our tab. And don't forget to put it in here as well. You gotta make sure it's in here or you can't use it. Now get rid of whatever's inside of here and let's go ahead and define our tab nav. So tab, oop, capital T, tab nav. And it takes two props. The first one. So the first prop is called tabs. And if you remember, it is an array of strings defining the names of your tabs. So I'm just going to do three tabs. The first one will be home. The second one will be settings. And the third one can be profile. So now the next tab is called selected and it's going to equal a data variable called selected. So let's go ahead and implement this. So go down here, create data, and put return, name the value selected, and by default, the default selected tab is going to be home, but you can also name it whatever you want. It has to be one of these tabs, but you can choose whichever one you want. I'm just going with the leftmost. Okay, so now that selected tab is being passed in as a prop to tab nav. And then there's one other thing we have to do right here. So do at selected equals set selected and what this is doing actually this is a method let's go ahead and implement that first so go down here say methods set selected picks in a tab and do this dot selected equals tab so this is pretty simple it's just a method that sets this value to whatever is passed in. Now this, if you don't know about events, this may be a little bit confusing. What this is doing is listening for an event called selected. And anytime that event is emitted, then it calls this method. So if you remember in tab nav, we have Oh wow, I actually forgot something. Okay, so <laughs> I forgot to do something. So on this anchor tag, you want to put at click equals set tab and then pass into it whatever this tab is. So what this does is whenever you click this tab, it calls the set tab method with the name of whatever that tab is and the set tab method down here emits an event called selected and it sends this data through which is just the name of the tab and then it goes to app.view which detects that event right here calls this method and then sets it sets this value right here hopefully that makes sense. I would also like to note that anytime you use tab nav, you also need 
to define this data and this method. The reason for this is because anytime you use tab nav, you're using it inside of what is called a smart component. What that means is it, it has logic to it. It deals with logic. So usually you wouldn't use the tab nav component inside of app.view, but I'm just doing it for the sake of the tutorial. Usually you would do it in some kind of component or page that is like pooling data from a server and it's doing all this logic. And because it's doing stuff like that, it's a smart component. Whereas tab nav and tab are called dummy components. They're called dummy components because all they do is display data, nothing else. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and create the actual tabs. So tab, and then on our tab, it has one prop called is selected. And the way we're gonna do this is by saying selected equals, and then whatever tab this is. So first one is called home. So this is just a condition. If the selected tab is equal to home, then show this tab. If it's not equal to home, then don't show this tab. So let's just go ahead and create the next two tabs. Put settings here and profile here. Now let's just put some stuff inside of these tabs. So let's put a P tag, some test text. And then in here, let's put an H1 tag, more test text. And just to show that we can, let's put an unordered list inside of here with some list elements one and just to be quicker i will copy and paste this okay i believe that is everything normally i would not recommend writing this much code without saving and checking for errors or looking to see like your progress see what's on the screen but for the sake of tutorial, that's what I did. So go ahead and save all and go over to your terminal and run your server with npm run serve. It doesn't automatically open the browser. Just copy whatever the URL is, paste it in. And there is our tab navigator. Let's check if it is responsive, and it is indeed responsive. Awesome. So that is how you implement a very basic tab navigator. And that, as I said, is basic. If I was going to implement this into my website, I would do some more stuff. For example, hovering over this, you should have a pointer cursor. So it should be like a hand and also I would make this have some padding so that this is more to the right and more down a little bit. But this is just like easy CSS stuff that you experiment with until it's the way that you like it. I hope that I was able to help you out today. If so, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below and I will do my best to get to them.